Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm guessing that some of you, you're not happy. Maybe you don't fit in. People make fun of you. Well, I can't make you straight, but you give us this week and we might be able to help. Do you think your parents are disappointed in you? Sometimes. So what do you do? You try to make yourself special. You become they. Hey, K-Bay. I'm told I'm supposed to be talking to you officially as Mr. K-Bay. Is that true? Well, that's according to my incredible cast that I was so, so uh, proud of being a part of. I mean, you look at them over there and they all did such an incredible job. And, and um, it's just, you know, it's very moving to um, see them all here gathered and it, just like it was on the first day we worked. Absolutely. I mean, it must be incredible as the seasoned actor to see so many talented young queer actors coming into this space, working on such an incredible project. What did that mean to you? Well, listen, I mean, uh, John Logan did a very exhaustive um, search to find the best possible people to play these roles. And they're very, you know, kind of specific sort of roles, you know. And the fact that uh, they can be represented in this movie with a lot of authenticity and a lot of honesty. And um, I, I, I just had a, tr when I, the first day that I walked out and uh, the very first scene of the movie is the very first scene we shot and I looked out across everybody, all these beautiful faces standing there. Um, I just felt it was very moving for me, you know, very, very proud and very moving. All right, let's get started with the genre of horror. Were you always a fan? Yes, I was the weirdest kid. I was like six years old and I loved horror. That's all my dad and I did when we grew up. I would just, we had, every Sunday we'd watch horror movies. So I love, I love them with my whole heart. So. so what was it about this script when you're adding horror to this very powerful queer storyline that attracted you to the script? I think especially because there's there's not I mean now there's more coming out but there's really not there's not been a really truly queer centered horror film like especially like this you know being at a conversion camp and dealing with all of that what everyone deals with so I think that's been really great to watch and then the script is just incredible John Logan is one of is a genius he's a genius and the script is just so beautiful in how it represents everyone and and just brings it just very positive so yeah taking this genre of horror and you're kind of upping the ante a little bit because you're putting a very big activism message behind it yeah. right what it spoke to you about that script uh, well what's beautiful about the activism message is that it's it's not such it can feel bold but it's also pretty matter-of-fact and you're dealing with material that is pretty horrific but is also true um, in some ways you know and of course there's a fantastical element to it and um, it's almost like magical realism in that way that you're taking something that's so that is very dark but also has is real you know these these conversion camps existed and exist and so to take that and and allow the message to be told through that story I think is is really great and powerful a really powerful way to tell that story I think I have zero interest in not being gay there's no judgments in this room sometimes I wish I was invisible I would understand it a lot more if there was Bible thumping and queer bashing. Do you even believe in any of this? Were you a fan of horror growing up? I'm, I'm a huge fan of horror movies, yes. Okay, so taking that passion for horror and kind of mixing it in with a script like this that has a powerful queer message, what was it like to you that when you first read the script and why did you want to follow through with it? So I was working, I was very lucky because I was working with Joan in the play in New York and then uh, we had to shut down because of the pandemic and um, three months later he called me saying I wrote this role for you and I want you to play. So that's how it happened um, and I felt, I feel very honored just to be in a movie where you have a team that is wants to celebrate your uniqueness and you know uh, and incentivates you to be who you are and that's what this movie is about you know it's just empowering us as queer actors and everyone you know cool. yeah. the most important thing about our film is that it has queer and trans people visible 
you know, they're certainly going through it in the film, but they are happy, they are alive. A lot of them are very empowered, and those that aren't by the end of the film become empowered. I think that this is going to be an iconic queer horror film that is going to give people a lot to think about. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Were you a horror fan growing up? I think I'm the only one on this cast who is not a horror fan. No, you're not. I'm not? There's been a few. Really? So I'm a super scaredy cat, but there's so many members of our cast that are like, know so much about horror, and I'm like, I'm just gonna... I'm just going to sit here and smile. So with that opinion, especially with this huge, powerful activism message behind the movie, what draw you to the script? I mean, to be honest, for my storyline, I read it as a love story. Um, so, I mean, I always joke, my cast member Anna Lori and I, we always joke that we're in a rom-com and we're not in a horror movie. I mean, when you see the film, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that is what drew me to the film. What was it like to watch Kevin, who is very adored in a certain kind of typecast role, be in this kind of movie, which represents a lot of the negativities that has to do with conversion camp? I mean, he's so good at playing evil, but he is the nicest person alive, and he is an ally to our community. He's actually working with Born Perfect right now, which is a nonprofit that's working on ending conversion therapy. Um, and it's just been a master class watching him work, and I, I still have to pinch myself that I've worked with him. I mean, we, we call him K-Bay. That's what we call him on set. We, we gotta get that trending, K-Bay. When he comes here, I'll say, hey, K-Bay. Yeah, be like Monique said, hey, K-Bay. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I was, I'm scared, I'm a scaredy cat. Me too, me too. So if you guys are both scaredy cats, what draw you to the script, especially one that has such a powerful, beautiful message about activism? through the gay space. I mean, you said it yourself, it's gay. It's that's what gay. drew me to it. Yeah, and that's literally what drew me to it. <laughs> I've never heard, when I saw like the log line of kids going to a horror movie uh, about a gay conversion camp, I was like, I've never heard of a horror movie about a gay conversion yeah, camp Yeah, it's special, it's different. No, It's never been done before, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and then for Kevin, who is in these roles that are very like lighthearted and to step into this very terrifying horror role, what was that like to see the transition from person to character on set? He's a character actor. He's pretty smooth. He's he kind of just goes right into it. Like he just like just I yeah, don't even know how like, to describe it. He'll like just get in it, and all of us, you know, when when it says you know pictures up and it's rolling, it's just he just he He's takes a, his time. And there's like maybe a little silence before he starts, and then he just goes. He's a smooth guy. He's a yeah, smooth he's guy. A but then in between swab. takes, you know, he'll throw in a little joke. Like right. he'll throw you something to like kind of get you uh, like on your toes or whatever. Right. Like, yeah. He keeps it fun and light and yeah. stuff. It's not like people are out here like yeah. getting traumatized by his character. Like he's not his character. Like he's really you know, down to earth. And, nice. and we need that in between takes, right? Because it's heavy. It's yes, and it was heavy. hot. It was hot. It was hot and oh. sticky. It was, hot and <laughs> it was and all sticky. the things. We were in the you know, woods. Right, snake wranglers out there poking for snakes. Yeah. That's the most terrifying part. Right. No, yeah. thank you. I would have been like, I'm out. Right. That's the horror. That's the horror <laughs> that's of it. The is, horror. That's the real horror is these snakes that are in the grass. But You know, I, I'm always consider myself um, part of my mission as an actor and a director is to highlight and be a part of and support LGBTQIA um, uh, work and so that it becomes as mainstream as any other story about the human condition. And this movie does that in a really fun and interesting and new way. And so I wanted to be a part of it, even if it meant I had to play one of the most horrible people I've ever played. This could get a lot worse. Where's my killer? We need to get out of here. Taste. Just enjoy the sunshine and work on your tan. They slash them. Streaming only on Peacock, August 5th.